Hello YouTube and welcome to Katrinka LOL and today we're going to take a walk down memory lane uh, or nostalgia whatever you'd like to call it these are things that uh, really are no longer uh, in our times but uh, that I lived through so some of you will remember it and, and to others of you it will be a surprise to hear what it was like so anyway here we go I'm going to talk about, first, the telephone. I remember having the phone company come to your house with a phone to install it and set up your account. And the phone actually belonged to the phone company. So uh, if you gave up your account, then they would take back the phone. Um, I remember the rotary dial phone. and. You know, you had to do it just right, and, and it was it was very cumbersome because you would if let's say it was a nine, then it went all the way around, da, 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 and then you could do the next number. So um, if you messed up, which which usually happened near the end of when you were dialing, then you had to hang up the phone and start over. So that was that was kind of frustrating. Uh, I remember waiting by the phone for a call, especially if you were waiting to hear back after a job interview. There was no voicemail then, so you'd have to ask other members of the household to refrain from unnecessary calls so that you could receive your call from the job, something that didn't always work out in the house when there were several people in the house and only one phone. So um, I remember that long distance calls cost a lot more and were expensive, so it was a luxury only used for important things and emergencies. And if you had an emergency outside of your home, you had to hope for the best or try to get to a, a payphone, a public payphone. So uh, those public payphones were all over the place, of course. So um, I remember in college, we had to wait in line to use the one payphone in the dorm. Calls were made collect where the charges were made to the receiver of the call. So you, you put a dime or whatever it was that you put into the, into the slot, and then you would call the operator and ask for a collect call. So that's, that's how that worked. But in the particular dorm that I was in, there was a staircase right next to the phone booth and the, my doormates would, would line up on the steps of the stairs waiting for their turn at a call. And you can imagine if you were seventh in line that you might have to wait an hour because each call was about 10 minutes. You could talk to a real operator on the phone, a real person. You could call the operator to get information, such as a phone number and so on. The operator uh, would interrupt if you if you put money into a into a, a payphone, and you ran out of time. The operator would come online and uh, and cut you off, and tell you to put more money in. And if you didn't, you were just cut off. So. Sometimes people would find coins in the, in the coin slot, the coin return of the payphones, and people would check it to see if there was forgotten coins in it. I don't know really exactly how it worked, but you'd get refunds if you didn't use up all your time purchased. So that, that's it about phones. So that was, uh, I mean, it's just amazing to me still uh, that you can have a phone in your purse nowadays, you know. Um, all right, and let's now talk about the camera, which also is on your phone nowadays. But you would have a regular camera and would put film into it. You would bring the film to be developed at a developing place, and you would have to wait to get it back at least a few days, maybe a week. Then and only then would you see how your photos came out. You couldn't see them ahead of time. And you couldn't just take photos willy-nilly. You had to be careful not to waste the film. 
You couldn't delete something you didn't like or even see what the photo looked like until after it was developed. The camera had a counter that would tell you how many photos you had left and each roll of film didn't have that many potential photos on it, maybe 12 or, or 24. You, you'd have to order, order additional copies of photos you liked if you wanted to share it with others and since this could become expensive, it wasn't done all the time. So you'd put the photos into a photo album so you could look at it later and show to people who came to visit. For school photos and graduation photos, a professional photographer would come to the school to take the photos, and then you'd have to wait for the samples. These were, of course, printed samples. Then you could pick the number of photos you wanted, the size, etc., from the photographer, usually in a package deal of some sort, and then you'd have to wait again to get them back. Now, you might think that all of this was inconvenient, and you'd be right, but this is all that we knew. So we didn't miss what we never had. It was just the way it was. So um, I hope you enjoy my little trip down memory lane and uh, put some comments if, if you remember these things or if you're surprised to hear this is how it was back then. And uh, I appreciate you all and I'll see you in the next video.